Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. So for this one, you're going to want to grab your dog, your cats, your fish, your hamster, whatever animal that you have, and hold them tight because it is a happy time for all of you animal lovers out there. Donald Trump has officially made animal cruelty a federal felony. That is right. He has officially signed the PACT Act. It is about damn time. So the bill was unanimously approved back in the House in October and in the Senate at the beginning of November. So this is a huge milestone in the bipartisan quest to end animal abuse and protect our pets. That's right. Hold them tight. The BACT Act was first introduced back in January. And uh, the bill made the creation and distribution of animal crushing videos illegal. Um, The underlining acts of cruelty against animals, though, were not included, which is crazy. So you could not create or distribute animal abuse, but there was no signs of the underlining acts of cruelty included in it. But now any loophole or gap in the act is now closed by prohibiting any extreme cases of animal, animal abuse that results in serious bodily injury or death, whether or not a video is created. Finally, 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 finally. Of course, all the animal lovers and all the animal uh, animal rights activists are just overwhelmed with joy. I mean, even if you aren't a total animal lover or an animal rights activi- activist, come on. You can't say this news does not make you happy. Finally, it is recognized that all the animals do not have a voice to speak up for themselves. Even though, of course, a lot of us really wish that they did have a voice to speak up for themselves. They don't, so we need to make sure that we're doing it. Um, We need to take the stand and we need to speak up. And finally, it has been done which is just so exciting for everyone out there. The bill really makes a statement about American values. Of course, animals are deserving of high-level protection. And it's our job to continue to speak up for their protection since they can't. Um, If this news doesn't make you want to cuddle up with your fur baby for a week straight, I don't know what will. And if you don't have a fur baby, well... I'm sure you're dying to sneak over to your friend's house and cuddle theirs. I definitely know it makes me want to. I actually have a pet turtle, which is not the most cuddly animal in the entire world. But it still makes me want to hang out with my pet turtle. So go grab your fur baby, grab your reptiles, your hamster, your goldfish, whatever it is, and just celebrate because finally, animal cruelty is a federal felony. Isn't this just like a good excuse to adopt a dog or go adopt an animal? You know, in celebration of animal cruelty finally being a federal felony, go there and adopt a dog (laughs) or cat, whatever you want. I think that's a, a valid reason to finally do the adoption that you've been waiting for. (laughs) So keeping on the fur baby train, let me paint a picture in your mind. You know, you're relaxing at home, you're drinking a few beers on your couch while watching the football game. You've got your best friend beside you. You two are closer than ever. It's your golden retriever, Chester. Your best buds, you do everything together. You're watching this game. It's a good game. The home team's winning. You're happy. The beer tastes even better because your little golden retriever, Chester, is sitting beside you. Oh, touchdown, and Chester barks an applaud. Ah, what a good feeling, am I right? 
Well, now you can have that feeling, not just in the comfort of your own home, but at a tap house while drinking beers with your human buddies and, of course, your best dog buddies. That's right. There is Fido's Tap House in Oregon is officially the world's first bar and restaurant that also doubles as a foster home for pups. So these pups were rescued from kill shelters in Central California. So yes, you get to go sit at this tap house, drink beer, and hang out with rescued pups. I don't think it could get any better than that. It's crazy, am I right? I mean, there's such thing as cat cafes. Why shouldn't there be puppy tap houses? Well, that's exactly how the founder, Scott Porter, got inspired for this idea. He learned about cat cafes and then decided to launch this amazing tap house. So Scott is a dog lover himself and hopes that foster dogs will help give families the same kind of love and therapy that his own dogs have offered him. I mean, how sweet is that? Even if you just get to go hang out with a puppy while you drink a few beers, I mean, there's no complaints there, right? Okay, so now you're probably wondering exactly how this all works. Well, the bar can accommodate up to eight dogs at a time, but usually there's about three or four shelter dogs at a time in a room. This room is separated from the dining area, so you don't need to worry about any of that. Um, Now, one of the first things that I pictured when I heard about this was, you know, a group of friends sitting at a table, having a few drinks, you know, maybe a couple too many drinks. They're hanging out with some cute puppies. You know, the alcohol is starting to talk a little bit. Oh my goodness, I think we should get one. He's so cute. I'm going to call him Nibbles. Oh my goodness. A couple more beers later, and it's decided Nibbles is getting a new home. Okay, but what if you wake up the next day with Nibbles licking your face and you don't remember a thing? Well, don't you worry because Fido's Tap House has thought of everything. It is required that you wait three days afterwards to actually adopt Little Nibbles just to make sure that alcohol did not influence the decision, which is totally the right decision to do because you never know. So... I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to start looking into flights to Oregon very soon. I mean, I could definitely handle a Friday night with a few beers and some puppy cuddles. The love a man has for his daughter's hamster um, has blown up on the internet. This just shows what animal lovers really do for their animals. So... Um, text messages from a concerned father went viral after his daughter posted screenshots on Twitter of the updates. Um, I guess while his daughter went off to college, he was in charge watching her little hamster. Um, and I guess one day this little buddy went missing. And so the father went on a search and rescue mission for the missing hamster. He ended up getting very attached to this hamster, I guess, while his daughter, Steph, was away at university. And that became very apparent when the hamster went missing. He sent a text message to Steph saying, please call me as soon as you get this. It's an emergency. He began to explain that the little hamster got out of the cage and was hiding somewhere in the home. He repeatedly apologized over and over and over again about this crazy story and says he keeps looking all day long. He even offered to skip work to keep searching for the little hamster. Steph told her father that it wouldn't be necessary, saying, you shouldn't skip work. You are a lawyer and he is a hamster. (laughs) If that's not dedication to your little fur buddy, I don't know what is. Uh, he kept searching, even setting up traps with flour so that if the hamster, like, walked along it, then he could, like, find the footprints. So he was thinking of everything. He even joked that the search for the hamster was the most stressful day in his life since he took the bar exam. (laughs) This earned him a lot of love online. It's completely blown up on Twitter. 107 thousand retweets and 428,000 likes from Twitter users who just fell in love with his panic search for his daughter's hamster. 
so cute. So you're probably wondering uh, what happened to the little guy. Yes, he was found. I guess I guess the little little hamster was found in his cage. <laughs> um, I don't know if he was there the entire time or what exactly happened. He, maybe he made his way back. But either way, this blew up on Twitter, blew up on media for the love of a little buddy. And uh, I just think it's so cute and crazy what we will do for our animals, for our little pets, searching the entire day for just our little four animals. An eight-year-old boy from Maryland is helping veterans get back on their feet one care package at a time. This little eight-year-old boy, Tyler Stallings, was just four years old when he felt compelled to help veterans in need. Isn't that so sweet? His mother, Andrea Blackstone, had shown Tyler a few online videos about veterans just to teach him about about what it was and what they are and show that some of his relatives who have enlisted in the military had done. She just wanted to teach her son some information about it. So they came across a video that focused on veterans who struggle with homelessness. Um, I guess Tyler just saw veterans holding signs and no one responding to their cry for help. And it just really affected this little four-year-old. So Tyler initially wanted to build houses for the vets, purchasing supplies from a hardware store. Uh, His mother instead contacted government Larry Hogan, who gave the boy a $100 grant to put to good use. So that single donation uh, put Tyler into mission that has carried on for four years now. He's joined the Maryland Center for Veteran Education and Training and became an advocate to raise awareness about the struggles of veterans after their service is complete. He just became very passionate about it and did not want to stop helping. So Tyler actually came up with this idea called Hero Bags, which is basically like a backpack uh, filled with like clothes, bath products, um food, some bedding, basically anything that you would need. And he would pass this out to the homeless veterans. Tyler says, when my mom said we couldn't build homes for the veterans, I came up with an idea where we could just give them hero bags instead. The bags just uh, consist of all regular things that people need, like clothing, shoes, toiletries, toothbrush, lotion, shaving gel, hand sanitizer, snacks, Whatever you think they could need, Tyler has put this into one backpack that he likes to call the Hero Bag, which is just so sweet. Since becoming inspired four years ago, he's actually helped raise more than $50,000 to help homeless veterans through his donation page and other means. So it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I can't imagine what this little four-year-old's dream, now that he's eight... What it's become, it's been, it's come so far, I can't even imagine what he's going to do after this. I just think it's so sweet how a little boy was so compelled to help veterans in need. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows. From the GSMC Podcast Network, from social media news to marketing news, and even even weird news. The GSMC Podcast Network has you covered. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast.